the Mega Man X2 task just got even crazier. And that's because this time we're going to be getting 100% of the items and I believe all three of the zero parts as well. And uh, first of all, RIP to Green Biker Dude. We gotta give the guy respect every time we see it happens. I mean, why is there not a spin-off game based on Green Biker Dude? I want to learn more about them. I'm sure you probably want to learn more about them, but anyway. Green Biker Dude aside, the intro stage is probably going to be mostly the same on account of, uh, not having any items in the intro stage, so maybe it'll be different though, who knows? This task is older than the last one. The last one I believe was a fairly new task surprisingly, but this one is um pretty old, it's several years old. But yeah, I mean the intro stage is already done, meaning it's time to fight the big ol' intro stage boss. I remember there was a commercial back in the day that fought this boss. I don't remember what commercial it was, but if any of you guys remember, please comment down below because as a kid I was like, that's Mega Man X2! I know that boss and it, I thought it was- anyway, let's, let's just get to the game. And of course, we're going to be starting with Wire Sponge, who you should always start with in Mega Man X2. Now this time we probably will see- yep, we'll see the heart take immediately. This is one of the main reasons you want to start with Wire Sponge, because even if you game over and you're unable to beat this stage for some reason, you got a heart upgrade out of it, and that's probably the best upgrade in this game, in my opinion at least. Now this jump is harder than you think. I did this jump in the uh, Mega Man X to the Cool Way video. It's not as easy as it looks. The rain can really mess you up, but we already got a heart tank and a sub tank, so that's pretty cool. That's a really good reason to go to Wire Sponge's stage first, but we all know the real reason we go to Wire Sponge's stage first in the task is because uh, Wire Sponge's weapon, the grappling hook thing, is very effective in speedruns. It lets you go a lot faster. You can grab onto walls and pull closer to them. You'll see all of it. I'm not going to ramble. We're seeing some clean gameplay as always, knocking the tail off, just barely getting over that enemy right before the Wire Sponge boss fight. Now let's see how this boss fight goes. Will Wire Sponge turn red. If you don't know, Wire Sponge usually turns red once he gets below a certain health threshold, but if you can manipulate his damage just right by shooting him at the right times, waiting for him to climb up on his vine right there, because if you kill him while he's on his vine, he's not going to turn red until he hits the ground. And Tass did, Tass did just that. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Um, you get the idea. And next up, we of course have Wheel Gator, the Crocodile. Now, this is a banger stage with a banger song, and we're already seeing nice use of uh, Wire Sponge's weapon, and we're gonna see it to get an upgrade early. Now, ooh, and going through the wall, always nice to see. And this is why you want to go to Wire Sponge and then Wheel Gator. I've talked about it before in a lot of my Mega Man X videos. Lots of people say they go to Wheel Gator stage first, and again, that's fine. You can go to wherever you want. That's the whole point of Mega Man. You can choose the order of your stages. But if you go to Wire Sponge first and then Wheel Gator second, you can still get this arm upgrade very early. You get the heart tank from Wire Sponge's stage. You have Wheel Gator's weakness. I mean, to me, there's really no reason not to go to Wheel Gator stage second and Wire Sponge first. But anyway, w with the charged uh, arm part, which we did not get in the... Uh, no, wait, we did get that in the last one, didn't we? I think we did. Am I crazy? Ooh, nice, nice invincibility frames to get that heart tank. That's hard to do. I normally wait for uh, the projectiles of that weird... Triceratops enemy to, <laughs> to get that thing as I did in my Mega Man X2, the cool way video. But that way is obviously even faster, but I assume it's a lot tighter. And yeah, I feel like we did get the um, upgraded arm cannon to use uh, charge shots because it's very helpful as we'll see. Multiple weapons in this game make you go faster when you use the charge shot variation of them. Obviously this makes your grappling hook larger. You can travel larger distances with it, but uh, this stage is already over and it's time to take on Wheel Gator. Now, will Tass allow Wheel Gator to go underneath the brown goo? Probably not. I'm saying no, but this is a lot tighter than you would think. Um, if you watch this video and you haven't fought Wheel Gator before, you might think, oh, Wheel Gator's really easy to chain, but no, that's actually a very tight window. Um, I encourage you to practice that and try for yourself. But anyway, very impressive as always by Taz. And next up we have Flame Stag, the deer. Now this is one of my favorite stages of all time, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time as far as Mega Man music goes. I mean, we're immediately using the grappling hook to get a, a sub tank. That's not how you're supposed to get it, by the way. You're supposed to use that big old bug that we didn't even get to look at that he breaks down the walls for you. And uh, there's a heart tank over here. And using the grappling hook to get in and out of there before it closes. Oh my gosh, I have trouble getting in there before that thing closes, let alone in and out. Tass is just another level. There's that big old bug I was talking about. If you lead it inside like that, you don't have to wait for it to break that wall you saw up there. And since this is a 100% run, we are getting all of these zero parts, meaning we have to fight all of these guys. This is uh, Sergi's, I believe, and uh, he's an old man. And yeah, these fights are normally really hard, by the way, but um, Tass is a really good gamer. I don't know if you guys are aware, Tass is very good at playing video games. Probably the best gamer of all time. Um, 
aside from me, because I beat one of Cass's records, but, uh, look at him, he just destroyed Sergi's immediately. Good, good grief. And there he went. There he went, we got a zero part. <laughs> nice. That was that. So we continue on the stage, once again using the grappling hook to traverse things so smoothly. I can't, I, I will never get tired of that. And, jeez, that charged up wheel gator weapon to kill those flying bug things with flaming tails? Good grief. This is some great stuff we're seeing so far. Let's see the fight with Flame Stag. Now, this boss fight to me is one of the easier ones, and it's also one of the most fun. You just follow this guy up the wall, you shoot him a few times, you kill him. I mean, did Taz just drop a wheel gator wheel and land it on, <laughs> on Flame Stag for the disrespect? My goodness, Taz, you're already having an impressive run. The disrespect is unnecessary. And next up, we of course have Magna Centipede. Now, this should be very interesting since it's a 100% run, unlike the other games. And um, also, fun fact with Mega Man X2, I'm pretty sure you can get all the upgrades without traversing or backtracking. If you do it right, this is one of like the, I think X2 and X7, if I'm not mistaken, are the only games you could do that. So we shouldn't see any revisits, but I could be getting mixed up with something else. But anyway, yeah, we just saw a heart tank it got real quick. And again, um, the flame thing when you charge it up obviously makes you go very fast, as you can see with Mega Man dashing while covered in flames. And that's one of the reasons uh, even in the any percent route, Mega Man got the upgraded arm cannon. Now, let's fight this sword. Last time we had Morph Moss weapon there and killed it immediately. This time, Taz did a really difficult trick that um, seems a lot easier than it really is. To kill that thing in one hit with a wire sponges weapon, you can't just shoot it regularly. Uh, it's, it's complicated, guys. I don't even know how to explain it, but you have to do some very precise positioning to get that kill. This guy, on the other hand, is just weak to fire, so uh, yeah. I don't know how Taz wasn't getting hit right there by any of those attacks by that robot. I, I guess, once again, very precise positioning. And again, all the fire weapon usage was, all the fire weapon energy was used, making this a very efficient and perfectly optimized stage for that weapon. But it's time for Magnus Centipede's battle. For some reason, the grappling hook was out here. Oh, and I think we're going to do the glitch, if I'm not mistaken. No, we're not doing the glitch. Okay, in the any percent route, there was a glitch done where uh, you trick Magnus Centipede into always doing the uh, tail thing. I don't know why he just sits there and does this the whole time. I don't exactly know how it works. Um, again, weird positioning, but this Taz is older, but it's still very fast. So anyway, still a good fight. Obviously, Taz knows what's best. Not going to question it. And up next, we have Bubble Crab, the fish. Now, this is a beautiful stage if I've ever seen one. The orange and red water from the sunset. Crazy stuff here. And then we go underwater. I mean, in most video games, when you see a water level, you're like, ah, oh, water level? I hate water levels, but when it comes to Mega Man games, they, they're they really good. I, I, I just had a flashback to a Duff McWhalen stage. That doesn't count. Anyway, most of the time they're very good, especially in classic Mega Man and the original trilogy of Mega Man X games to say the least. And oh my gosh, we saw one of those crazy slope jumps there. I was expecting to see a neon jump at some point, which is where you uh, fully charge a charge shot and then... You, you have like a frame to jump after the fully charged charge shot to have a second jump mid-air. Crazy stuff, very hard to perform, but um, we didn't even have to do it. We just did a slope jump, which is again what I did in the Mega Man X2 The Cool Wave video. And also, this is a violin. I, I uh, Apparently the comment section said that's uh, because he represents violins, so they named him Violin. I don't know if that's a translation error or... I don't know, but it's funny to me that he's named Violin, as in the instrument. But anyway, it doesn't matter what he's named because he is dead, and it's time to fight Bubble Crab. And here is Bubble Crab. How is this fight going to go? We do have his weakness. We have the upgraded arm part, and it seems like we are going to just be chaining him. Okay, Mega Man X was playing with fire right there, standing in there. In the, wow, that was a fast fight. I couldn't even talk about it. I was going to say uh, he used his invincibility frames to the last frame with one, two little slivers of health left, one hit away from death. But we know Taz. Taz likes to play with fire and be fun. So uh, good job, Taz. And up next, we have Crystal Snail, the slug. And my goodness gracious, I hate this stage. I love the music. Great music here, but I, I don't even hate this stage that much. But if I did, this would be the reason. This part sucks. This is a weird glitch where uh, you could somehow keep all the fuel in your thing without ever running out. It's so unbelievably hard to do, but I don't really understand it. So that's probably why I have trouble with being honest. But I just hate Crystal Snail, so I don't even want to learn that trick. I'd rather suffer every time I play this stage and just 
hate Crystal Snail. And yes, we did the glitch. If you position yourself just right there and then use Wire Sponge's weapon, you can skip that mini boss because it grapples you past the area you need to be in to trigger that mini boss. And instead, as we just saw, you skip it. And before I can even give out that explanation, we found the helmet upgrade, one of the worst helmet upgrades of all time, arguably only better than the Mega Man X3 helmet. And the only reason the Mega Man X3 helmet would be any worse is because at the beginning of every stage you open up, the game freezes for like five seconds while it shows you the map, and I don't have time for that. What do I look like? We're speedrunners here. We're looking at tasks for goodness sake. But yeah, this helmet just shows you secrets and not even that well. But it doesn't matter. It's 100%. We got to get all the items and let's just fight Crystal Snail already. Well, it's the moment I've been waiting for. It's time to fight Crystal Snail because I hate this guy. And yes, we broke his shell. Now he really is a slug. I told you guys, I know some of you guys started in the comment section saying, Did you just call Crystal Snail a slug? I did. He's missing a shell for goodness sakes. And now he's dead. So, it doesn't matter what I call him, he's dead. And next up we have Overdrive Ostrich. The, uh, Flamingo. Oh, I'm running out of things. Oh, I should have called him a duck. I, he kind of looks like a duck with that, uh, beak of his. Anyway. We're seeing some cool clips through these walls. I really enjoyed seeing those in the Any% run, and we're gonna be on this motorcycle for the majority of the stage if I understand correctly. Oof, nice, nice. I like this motorcycle section. I think it's very fun. Normally you would crash it into that thing, but obviously the game, it's intentional for you to be able to bring it in here too because I'm pretty sure this is the intended way to get that heart. I normally just suicide with like a dash in the air and a, uh, uh, what was it? The, the charged up flame stag weapon to get that hard as I did in the Mega Man X2 the cool way video But yeah, and do we just see a grappling hook used to get into the capsule slightly faster? That's kind of insane, but hey look now we have those dash boots. How cool is that? We can dash midair. I'm sure that's gonna come in handy But we'll see. I don't know why the helmet upgrade was used right there, but whatever. I'm not questioning it And here we go apparently so I was wondering why there was a rocket ship and Mega Man destroys it. Apparently, this is a nuclear bomb. I, I didn't expect that to be the case, but my comment section said it is, and I believe them. So Mega Man saved that nuclear bomb or wherever that nuclear bomb was headed to just in time because it was launching. Mega Man stopped the launch, and uh, now Overdrive Ostrich the duck is upset about that. He's like, hey, I was about to nuke somewhere with my nuclear bomb and you uh you foiled my plan Mega Man not cool and now you also killed me Mega Man once again not cool and up next we have Morph Mod the butterfly and here we go this is one of the farthest Mega Man has to teleport from a vertical standpoint he just falls for way longer than any other stage in this game from what I can tell and then yeah nice little heart tank up there Wait, how did Taz just do that? I wasn't even paying attention. Hold on, hold on. I'm backing this up. Because normally I crystal... Oh, wow. Okay. I, I knew you had to crystal snail somebody to get up there. That was so clean, I couldn't even see it. Taz crystal snailed that guy to the point where it clipped Taz forward and upwards to get that jump. Oh my goodness. That was... I, I, I know that sounds weird. That might not have seemed like it was worth backing up out of all the tricks that I haven't backed up on. But I literally couldn't tell how Taz made that jump because... I mean, I can't even tell you. Also, this is the, the body armor upgrade. It does that. And uh, thankfully, with that demonstration, we used all of our weapon energy. So we can't use it in this stage. Isn't that, isn't that so great? And yeah, nice vertical movement here, of course, jumping in between those gaps. Ooh, and the grappling hook. Here we go. Now we have the longest mini boss intro of all time, followed by one of the shortest fights ever. Now, I will give the, it, the mini boss this. It is a cool intro, despite being long. I mean, that thing was in some kind of test tube. Not sure what that's about, but I just don't appreciate how little actual fighting time there is with that mini boss compared to uh, the unskippable cutscenes, basically. And we're about to fight the last of the uh, X Hunters, right? These are the X Hunters. I always get confused with their actual role name, but this guy is agile, I believe, because uh, he is agile, as in fast. And this guy is uh, one of the easier X Hunters, I would say. But none of them are that easy unless you have all the upgrades like the, the main problem with these guys is You can run into them when you don't have very many upgrades and then they become hard But Tass has it covered and now we have every single zero part and I believe every upgrade in the game We shouldn't have to backtrack so that's pretty nice not having to backtrack I know you guys hate backtracking at least I get a lot of comments saying uh, They don't like backtracking so Hopefully you guys appreciate that and if you didn't know you could get all the upgrades without backtracking in this game 
Now you know exactly how to do it. But first, let's wait for this boss to spawn in. Let's wait for his hands and arms and head to fall off. And then kill that guy and wait for him to explode a thousand times. Okay, and now we get out of here. And good grief, there's a lot of green guys. Did you see that? There was a whole swarm of locusts over there. Anyway, let's get to the boss fight. And here we have the butterfly himself, Morph Moth. But first we have to uh, kill his cocoon. Because a uh, caterpillar can't turn into a butterfly without first going into a cocoon and melting himself and some, I don't know. I don't know how that works, to be honest. And uh, Morph Moth the butterfly is dead and he fell to his death as he died as well. He's double dead. But that was the last Maverick, meaning it's now time for the Sigma stages, or as my comments got upset with me in the last video, the X-Hunter stages. I apologize for calling them the Sigma stages. I'm so sorry, but uh, I'm going to continue calling them the Sigma stages. Um, yeah, I know they're the X-Hunter stages, but um, I I'm sorry. Who's the final boss this game? Sigma? Sigma, right? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trolling, guys. I actually, if you want to call them the X-Hunter stages, I don't care. You can call them whatever you want. Sometimes I get carried away with my trolling. I apologize. Yeah, here we go. We're clean gameplay. We're even using a crystal snail weapon to freeze that guy to get an extra little boost. Some nice vertical movement. Oh, a grappling hook to get on the right side faster, of course. Using the dash from the fire weapon. And I'm always so impressed on how fast the Sigma stages and in the Wily stages are in the task because like they're just so optimized. It's crazy. Anyway, here's Violin again because we didn't kill him with his weakness. And I assume it's faster to uh, not do that, because otherwise Taz would do that. If you beat him, you still get the zero part, even if you don't kill him with his weakness. But if you were to kill him with his weakness, you'd have to fight a different boss. I don't know. Weird stuff. Maybe I'm thinking of Mega Man X3. <laughs> I think maybe I am, but whatever. Good job, Taz. And now we have the second end game stage. And this is one of the quicker stages, but we're still going to be seeing some very clean gameplay here. First of all, using the shrapnel from Morph Moss weapons, crazy, killing all his enemies for fun, sliding underneath that missile, oh, jumping out of the water just barely, using the invincibility frames from the flamethrowers, dashing over the pit of spikes, and ending the level in perfect gameplay form. Crazy stuff by task. Now, normally I would cut ahead because you don't want to watch these uh, long cutscenes, and I try to keep keep uh, these videos short. But we get to see this little glitch with the not a glitch, but if you shoot um, that weapon early, you can blow up those two things. It's just a cool trick. I I know that like you can't leave that out of the video, right? You guys want to see that, I'm sure. Anyway, here's uh here's Sergi's again, and uh, now he's dead. Again, he's dead again. And here's the uh, end game stage three, one of the longer stages in the game. And the first time we watched the any percent route, obviously it was a different route. Oh, we got to see a neon jump, two neon jumps, finally. Maybe there's another one I missed, but with these neon jumps, as you can see, we get a second jump in mid air, which obviously helps with these vertical climbs. But the last time in the any percent route, we went down and it was way faster than I ever thought this stage was. And oh my gosh, what quick work of that challenging gauntlet. Now, if you don't know, this is the Shoryuken, and that room we saw for about a second and a quarter, that's one of the hardest things to get past in the entire game. And they give you a lot of extra lives so you can try it over and over again. And Tass, quick work as usual, but now we have this Shoryuken right there. And uh, if you didn't know, the Shoryuken's really good. And the stage is almost over. Even though this stage is so long, it... <laughs> Still very fast, crazy stuff. But now it's time to fight Agile, strange second form that was clearly built to be killed by the Shoryuken. I'm not sure why else Agile would change forms like that other than to be like, Hey Mega Man, you know that Shoryuken you just got? Kill me with that, come on, try it out. <laughs> anyway, uh, good fight. And now we have the refight stage, followed, or not followed by, preceded by a vertical corridor hallway, just like for Mega Man X1. And here we go with the refights. Let's see how they go. Whose stage is this? This has got to be Magna Centipede, of course. How are we going to kill him this time, Tass? Oh, sure you can. Of course. I should have known. What about this boss right here? It's a Crystal Snail. I hate this guy. Tass, what are we going to do to Crystal Snail? We hate Crystal Snail. Or, I hate Crystal Snail. Leave a comment down below if you also hate Crystal Snail. If you like him, though, that's fine. I, I'm not judging you. Oh, we sure you could them. Let's go. Oh, who's this? This has got to be Overdrive Ostrich's stage. I uh, see him running back there in the background. Taz, how are we going to kill this guy? Oh, my gosh. You're inside of him, Taz. How are you going to kill him? Oh, but, uh, sure you can. Of course. I should have known. Oh, golly gee, Taz. I believe this is Flame Stag, and now his fire is blue from the get-go. What are we going to do about that? Ah, oh, 
I should have known. Sure you could. Yes. Oh, Tass, is that bubble crab I see? You gotta be careful, there's spikes on the ceiling. I don't know if you could short- Oh, sure you can. Of course, I- I- What was I thinking there? Oh, it's Morph Butterfly. Tass! Oh, we sure you could, but Morph Butterfly survived! Oh my goodness! Morph but Morph Moth, I mean, is a, the cra oh nope, never mind. Sure you can. I was about to say that's the most overpowered boss of all time, surviving a sure you can like that, but uh turns out he's just a butterfly. Is that wire sponge I see? Tass, what are we gonna do about this guy? Come on. Oh, sure you can. I've got <laughs> silly me. What was I thinking there? Oh, Tass, look out, it's Wheel Gator. You gotta kill this guy quick, he's dangerous. Oh, Ooh, ooh, not just a sure you can, the one too. Hit him with the uh, the grappling hook to make sure he doesn't go underwater and then hit him with the shore you can. Good thinking, Tass. Good idea. Ah! Everything's exploding! Mega Man, get out of there quick! I don't know what you did to trigger such an explosion, but uh, I guess we beat the stage. Maybe that was the goal. Maybe the whole point of going there was to e explode the place, blow it up. Uh, it was... Anyway, here we are at Magnus Centipede stage again for some reason. I know I said there were no revisits in this game, but uh... I guess I forgot about that. Wait a minute! This is the final stage of the game! They just reused the stage assets. Again, I don't know why. Maybe I'll make a video making a game theory in the future if you guys want to see that about why Sigma used Magnus Centipede stage instead of anything else. Ooh, and we, oh, I'm excited for this glitch. I'm excited. Uh, by the way, my hypothesis is that it's a research lab. I don't know. I'll look into it more. Hey, Zero's black. Oh, what? Zero died! No! Oh, it's the real Zero. Let's go. Sweet. Now we don't have to do that Zero boss fight. That means we get to save some time. Right? Hey, Zero, why are you looking that way? Mega Man... Zero, Mega Man's behind you. Oh, and this is the glitch. If you're sure you can just write, you can skip this entire cutscene book text box thing because uh, you were already standing on the ground that Zero blows up and... Uh, yeah, now you, now you can play the game, but this text box is just on your screen. And this also makes you invincible, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's why you can sure you can Sigma so easily. You're just invincible while this is happening. I covered this in my video on the best glitch from every Mega Man X game, but um, if you haven't seen that, I'm glad you're able to watch it now, because this is <laughs> this is one of my favorite glitches. There's still a cut- there's still a cutscene on the screen. Oh, but wait. It's Wireframe Sigma! From the graphics chip in the SNES card. Oh, sure you. Of course, of course. I need to get with the program. Everything's too with sure you. And uh, where'd he go? I hear him. I think. Where is he? Oh, uh, he he must have uh, hit the. He must have hit that thing in the background, right? Because he disappeared for you guys too, right? I'm not the only guy seeing that. I hope. Um, that's a lot of explosions. Surely that's enough explosions. Good grief. Don't need that many. Okay. Flashbang a few times for good measure. Mega Man! We've been over this! Why are you not dashing? Those explosions are rapidly catching up to- You know what? I'm sure Mega Man made it out. We get a picture of the night sky followed by an explosion. And, um, slowly the camera pans down, pixels at a time, one pixel at a time to be precise. Uh, just like a CRT would. CRT television, that is. Um, and it turns to daytime. That's how slow the camera pan is. It was so slow that the sun began to rise. And now this time Mega Man has all of his armor because this was a 100% task run, and... This text is far too slow for us to put up with, plus I can't read, so uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Because as usual when it comes to these task videos, I thought that was great. I was thoroughly entertained the entire time, and I was very satisfied by the 100% run of this task. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. You guys really want to see the 100% run, so um, yeah, I gave it to you. Well, I didn't give it to you. I didn't make this task, but we looked at it together, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next up, of course, we're going to be looking at the Mega Man X3 task, which might be my favorite Mega Man X game. I know a lot of people say that Mega Man X3 is bad. It's one of the worst Mega Man X games. First of all, that's ridiculous, but I'm not even going to get into that today. I'm just going to let you guys know that up next is the Mega Man X3 task, and if you guys continue to enjoy these 100% task runs, then after that, we'll look at the 100% Mega Man X3 task run. Why not? That should be fun. I believe there's also a task of beating Mega Man
an X1, X2, and X3 at the same time with one controller, which would be very interesting to take a look at. Someone in the comment section pointed that out to me, so if that sounds like something you guys want to see, leave a comment down below. But uh, if you don't want to see that, then leave a comment down below saying, Tutor P, I do not want to see the... Mega Man X1, Mega Man X2, Mega Man X3, one controller task. I don't want to see that, Tutor P. You have to tell me that, or else, how else will I know you guys don't want to watch it? Anyway, this video has gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.